Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello, folks. Welcome to yet another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, and we are coming to you from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank in Alpharetta. And we've got two terrific guests today, Dean Robertson with Integrated Insurance Solutions and Josh Josh Bernstein, and Josh is with Josh Bernstein Media. Before we get to Dean and to Josh, folks, just want to remind you that if you need help with the headaches of administrative tasks, bookkeeping, marketing, presentations, uh, maybe you need a workshop planned, well, go engage a smart and reliable office angel to get that done for you. They're not a temp agency or a placement firm. Office Angels matches your business support needs with angels who have the talent and experience necessary to help you maintain and grow your business on an ongoing or as-needed basis. Your terms, your timeline, they lend a hand when needed and fly off when the job is done. Find out more at officeangels.us or call Chief Executive Angel S.E. Escobedo at 770-442-921. Four, six. Now we turn to Dean Robertson. Dean is a principal with Integrated Insurance Solutions. Dean, welcome. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having me here yeah, today. Great to have you here. So tell us about you. Tell us about Integrated Insurance Solutions. How do you help folks? Well, uh, first of all, Integrated is a, a proud 18-year-old independent insurance agency located in Johns Creek, Georgia. <clears throat> and we help we help folks mainly with the commercial insurance. That's our primary focus. So the small business owners located in the Metro Atlanta area, we, we try to help as much as we possibly can. Now tell us how you give us a little bit of your background. I mean, what did, what were you doing before you started integrated? Well, as a much younger man than I am now, uh, we did what I tried to do, what they call chase a little white ball. And oh, so, you were not as wise as you are now, right? Uh, is that what it is? Right. <laughs> uh, much less gray hair, but, uh, you were chasing a white ball. That's correct. Yeah. I tried to get into the golf industry. I did get in the golf industry. So I went out to San Diego as a young man, uh, with hopes and dreams and went out there and got involved in the business, actually studied, um, got a good degree in golf complex operations management. Mm. Got involved in the PGA, earned my Class A PGA professional. Uh, so I've been that since 1996, and just really started the ground floor. You know, caddied, assistant golf professional. I used to give a lot of lessons, play a lot. Um, then you know, as you move on, you can become a head professional. We did that, and ended up as general manager at private facilities, so country clubs. So I was a country club general manager for you know, several years, and, wow. and moved around up and down the East Coast. And it was, a, it was a great life. You know, I've got no complaints. Um, as you get along, you you know, it, uh, further in your career, you find maybe you get a little further away from what brought you into the, the industry itself. You know, a lot of people have that story. Sure. Yeah. And um, so as a general manager, <clears throat> dealing with a lot of numbers and, and uh, instead of out there playing like I really wanted to. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So golf. And country clubs and management of those clubs to insurance. Yeah. How did that? How did that jump? Where I mean, all the things you could have done. Why insurance? Fair question. So I, I remember one day I was uh, it was Fourth of July. It had been a long day at the club. You know, it's those sunrise to sunsets and past that. You know, as a general manager working, and my my wife brought out two of our kids, our two oldest. I had a four year old and a two year old at the time. I remember sitting in my office, I have a four-year-old on one knee and a two-year-old on the other knee. And we're watching the fireworks go off. Mm-hmm. Now we weren't really supposed to be down there with the members. We had to be up in my office looking at this. And I just remember the fireworks going off in their eyes and all this uh, excitement they had. And uh, kind of hit me then, you know, I don't want to do this rest of my life. I don't want to work every holiday, work Father's Day, Mother's Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day, Memorial Day. <clears throat> I want to be that active father. And so that's when we started out, wife and I said, Hey, we you know, instead of running someone else's business, let's look for something for us to do, call our own. Um, and why insurance? Uh, well, other than it's a great industry, everybody needs it, uses it. Again, you can help people. As a general manager, you get reports at the end of every year. And one of those innocuous reports I get was called a rounds played report. 
It's a simple report that shows you who plays the most rounds at your facility. And so I took a look at it, and it kind of read like this. Insurance agent, insurance agent, dentist, lawyer, business owner, insurance agent, insurance <laughs> So I'm thinking, are you kidding me? Wow. Are these guys out here playing more golf than I ever have? And um, you don't have to stock anything on the shelves if you have some integrity and some knowledge, and uh, you can you know, be okay. I think I was duped a little. Those guys play a lot more than I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, absolutely a lot more than I ever have. Yeah. Um, uh, that got us, that got us started looking into it. And at that time, um, a couple of dear college friends of mine were moving out of their firms that they were with, involved in, uh, Michael Smith and Trey Mock, uh, and they were involved in the insurance industry. And then at that point, we decided to start integrated insurance solutions. It's been good. That's terrific. Uh, uh, folks, if you're just joining us, we're speaking with Dean Robertson and he is the, uh, or a principal in, uh, integrated insurance solutions. Um, so you're an independent agent, mm-hmm. uh, independent with an independent agency. Um, talk about why, uh, you went that direction versus, and why you think that's important for your clients versus the captive carriers out there, the big names people here on, uh, sure. we'll, we'll leave them nameless, but the big, big names we hear, <laughs> Uh, advertised on television. The captive agents, there's a lot of great captive agents out there. You know, yes, they do advertise a lot, but they write a lot of business, so they, they're doing something right. I think one of the the big advantages of being an independent agent versus captive agent is we have access to so many more markets. We have dozens upon dozens of markets that we can remarket your account to. Carriers' appetites for what type of business they write ebb and flow. Their premiums ebb and flow. They could have a bad loss year and need to make it up in in coming years. Well, if you only have one product to market your client to, um, that may not be the best opportunity for them. And so as an independent agency, we can take that same client and market to different carriers. And what we do at Integrated, let's say for uh, just a personal lines client, 90 days before their renewal, we print out a renewal report and we take a look at it. We make sure that their premiums haven't increased unjustly. Now, if they've increased and they may have added car or young driver, that's fine. Or if they've added a new building to their business or increased their exposure, we understand it and we can, we can explain why it's gone up a little bit. But if the carrier has just taken rate and my client may or may not have had any, had any losses to substantiate this, we can remarket them. And that's what we do. So we print that report out about 90 days out and make sure that everything's on the up and up, so to speak. So, Gotcha. Um, you deal in commercial lines, uh, work with businesses on their uh, insurance needs. What, what um, I guess two questions. Uh, what type of businesses do you like to work with? And then what are some of the mistakes that you see that they're making from an insurance perspective that you, you generally come in, look at their insurance coverages and, and point out corrections that need to be made? That's a great question. Um, love working with all businesses, of course. Here in the Atlanta area, there's a large IT contingent. It's been great for this area particularly. So we, we love working with IT firms, and um, we're able to do a good job with them because we have carriers that right, uh, enjoy that type of business. I love working with new businesses, and the reason I enjoy that is because I feel like I can help them the most. It's a scary time, and when you start talking about insurance with them and all these big numbers, gosh, you've got to have a million dollars of this and five million of that, and it's uh, daunting to say the least. How about that? And for someone like me who deals with it all day, every day, we can kind of calm them down and show them what what they truly need uh, to get going. So I enjoy working with the new businesses a lot. one thing I'll tell you a story. One thing I see, one of our, we have six core philosophies. One of our uh, core philosophies is correct comprehensive coverage is more important than price. And so you talk about mistakes. You know, oftentimes we'll see a policy that may or may not have what that client needs or may have, may have too much of what the client needs. One particular case, it was an IT company and IT companies can really grow rapidly and sure. their exposures change quickly. And if you don't review this, uh, there can be some exposures. And we had an IT company that was doing just wonderfully. I'm so proud of them. Um, they had gotten up and uh, the millions and millions of dollars of revenue and hadn't reviewed their policy. They sent it over to me. And I said, hey, you, you might want to take a look at this particular coverage. Now, this coverage is very inexpensive, hired non-owned liability. 
cost them about $250 a year, but they had some exposure for the secondary liability. And sure enough, it wasn't the next day, but it was several years later where a claim came in, and that claim was $250,000. One of their subcontractors was driving over to a job for them, was looked down to his floorboard to retrieve a, a rolling object, and sure mm. enough, hit the, hit the rear end of a car. Mm. And that car hit another car. Mm. And in the first car was a wonderful young lady who was pregnant at the time, and that claim went to $250,000. Oh, wow. Yeah. But for $250 – they were able to get that coverage. So it, it is important to review that piece, you know, with your agent annually um, or as often as you can. If you think exposures are changing, you know, call your agent, call me. We can be happy to review it you know, anytime for you. Yeah, I, th- I think uh, folks discount risk sometimes, right? They do. They yeah. absolutely do. We're inundated with the, it, the media telling us success stories of I saved him money. I saved him money. Right. We don't hear the success stories of say what I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Hey, we found a coverage gap and we were able to fill that for you and, 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 um, avoided a huge loss for your business. I mean, that could, that can cripple someone. Well, put you out of business. I mean, right. I mean, yeah. And, and you're, you're absolutely right. It seems to me that a lot of the mark insurance marketing out there is all about price. It's all about how much we can save you. Um, as opposed to if you look under the hood, they may be saving you money because they're cutting back on certain coverages, right? That is exactly correct. And that's the fear. Uh, that's the fear as agents, you know, uh, the speed of business these days, it is, is great. Technology is fantastic, but it's making the speed of business so fast. I don't know that we're being as diligent as we need to be. Sometimes you talked about, uh, Companies having particular, uh, I guess, affinities for certain industries. Um, and we're in a tech rich area. You talked about the different technology companies that you, you deal with. What, what are some of the specifics that you see there that tech companies ought to pay attention to? Well, tech companies these days, there's a, there's a newer coverage, you know, we call it cyber liability and cyber liability is just an overarching term for a bunch of different underlying Coverages like cyber extortion and cyber terrorism and data breach. How many times have you heard about data breach these days? Target. And every day. Bay, every day. Mm-hmm. And um, that coverage is fairly new because this is a new exposure. Mm. And so those IT companies, whether they believe it or not, whether they're building websites or writing code, you know, there's there's opportunity for these hackers to come in and cause damage. Sure. The data breach, third party liability, the regulatory penalties and fines. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Um, and so if there's any company, one, in the IT field, they need to consider this professional liability and cyber liability. And two, if you're storing any personally identifiable information on people, that's a data breach exposure. And it's not that expensive. Um. And don't assume it's expensive, right? Look into it. <laughs> right, yeah. Don't l- look into it, uh, and and uh, give Dean Robertson a call uh, with Integrated Resource uh, Integrated Insurance Solutions um, uh, to check it out. Where, where do you see the insurance industry going, uh, Dean, over the next ten years? Technology is still the driver. It's the driver in most industries, and certainly the forefront um, of our industry. And right now. We are on the cusp of artificial intelligence just being your agent. You can call a carrier right now and get insurance through a robot. How about that? Interesting, huh? Sounds personal to me. (laughs) (laughs) Real personal touch. touch. Yeah, personal touch. I wonder what the Christmas card or the holiday card is going to look like (laughs) they're going to send out. (laughs) Right. Um, And so it it, it raises some questions. Um, If you're calling this robot, this carrier, um, who's going to advocate for you? Are you going to, you going to call that robot when you think your claim isn't being handled correctly? Probably not. That robot, like a lot of the people on the other, other end of an 800 number are working for the carriers as an independent agency. I'm not beholden to any single carrier. I work for the client. You know, I'm, I'm the advocate for you. Uh, so the technology is big and you're going to start seeing different players in the carrier side, like Amazon and and the big boys will be getting involved. Really? Yeah, yeah. Look for it. 
look mm. for it. Yeah, but uh, the artificial intelligence, the uh, the technology is just is uh, booming in our industry, and it's going to bubble up here pretty quickly. So, how does the world look for integrated in that particular uh, uh, picture you painted? Great question. Uh, we continue to try to be the most efficient. Um, client-centered independent agency around. You know, that's what we want to be. We want to be efficient and we want to be client-centered. And, yeah, we do use technology, whether it's a secure portal or turn around quote, quotes a little quicker, but client-centered, you know, start with that. Um, the rest, you know, as well as, I guess, what else is on the horizon for integrated, you hear the saying, there's kind of three stages in someone's career. You learn, earn, and return. So mm. we are always learning. It's, it's, of I course. can't get away from that. Of course. I can't get away from that. But trying to return, trying to give back to this community. It's been great to us. We want to be great to it. I'm active in the Rotary, um, sitting on the board of the Alfreda Business Association as well now. My wife and I run a turkey trot that donates to the Wellspring Living Academy. So I'm um, just trying to – Trying to be more cognizant of that. So. Cool. Great stuff. Dean Robertson, he's with Integrated Insurance Solutions, a principal there. So, Dean, this has been great. For those that would like to be in touch with you, would like more information, uh, tell them how they can do that. They can certainly visit our website at iis-ga.com. They can email me directly at drobertson, that's D-R-O-B-E-R-T-S-O-N, at iis dash ga.com or call the office at 770-667-3636. And if you want some golf tips, he can provide those as well, That's right? Dean? Exactly right. I love it. <laughs> Dean Robertson. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Uh, folks today, you're connected more than ever, whether it's your friends, your family, or your life. Renaissance understands how you bank offering the mobile banking services that you need. Renaissance also knows that sometimes you need to speak to real people with real answers, and that's why Renaissance has more than 190 convenient locations throughout the South ready to serve you. For more information, go to renaissancebank.com. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, member FDIC. And now we turn to Josh Bernstein. Josh is uh, the lead consultant with Josh Bernstein Media. Josh, welcome. Thanks. Great to be here. Uh, you must be the lead if your name is on the firm, right? I'm the lead and sort of the sole lead. <laughs> I which love it. Spent a lot of time in the lab coming up with the name. More or less. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's okay. There's no problem with that. People, no. if they talk talking to you, they're talking to the head guy, right? You're talking to the, the one guy. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so, Josh, tell folks what you do and how you help. So, I am an independent Google advertising professional, and for over 12 years, I've been in the world of getting people's website and business listed at the top of Google it is, you know, for a price, obviously it is an advertising platform first and foremost. And I'm independent and have been independent for the last seven and a half years out of uh, Marietta. And um, I handle all aspects of creating a Google advertising account from start to finish. So let's talk about what, Let's get some definitions straight for folks because right. I think it's a confusing subject for a lot of business owners. Be be specific about what a Google ad is. A Google ad is a result at the top. Whenever you do a search on Google, whether it's on your phone, a tablet, or a laptop, you'll see the ads pop up at the top of the search results, which is called the SERP. It's called the, which is the search engine results page. So what what you're looking at, on Google.com is called the SERP after you type in something called a search query, which is what Google defines as what a search is called. And from there, you'll see the ads pop up. You know, usually it give me two listings on a mobile device and up to four listings on a desktop, technically. So, and the way it works is you decide to bid on keywords. Now, the keywords are basically the advertising name for what a search query is, what the person is searching on. And it's my job as the Google ads professional to take those keywords, refine them, and write relevant ad copy for them. Make sure they're geo-targeted to where you want to show your ads as well. Make sure to place the appropriate media budgets in place for how much you want to spend, and we'll talk about the pricing in a second. And then 
make sure everything else is relevant. The biggest key for this platform is relevancy. You want to make sure you're bidding on keywords that are relevant to your products or services first and foremost. So let's, let's say there's what? 7 million people in Metro Atlanta, give or take. So from for whatever you do for the most part, somebody out there is searching for you right now and somebody else is going to be searching for you tomorrow and somebody's going to be searching you the day after that. So if you really want to get immediate results in terms of I need awareness, I'm looking for leads for my business, this is the platform to do it. So uh, that's all sounds great, but let's get get uh, folks defined further. So there's this uh, business about SEO out there, search yes, there engine is. search engine optimization. Correct. So what's the difference between SEO and Google Ads? SEO is a technical service. It is not an advertising platform. SEO is marketing. SEO is where somebody, usually somebody vested in website you know, development, they come in and they try to optimize your website to get you a higher ranking organically on Google so you're not paying for the ads. With the Google Ads, it is a pay-per-click platform where you will pay – a certain amount of money every time somebody clicks on your ad. Now, the price of that click is defined by you as the advertiser. You have, you tell me a certain amount what you're willing to pay for a click and how much you're willing to pay per, per day for the total amount of clicks. So you have a, which is called the daily budget. You have a daily budget, let's say, of $50. You want to make sure you're paying as little as possible per click because the more clicks you get, the more, you know, <clears throat> the less, you know, your budget's going to run out during the day. So you don't want to max out your budget. The higher you pay per click, the more often the chance of your ads will stop running once you deplete your budget. We're speaking with Josh Bernstein, and Josh is a, a Google Ads expert with Josh Bernstein Media. Um, talk about how those prices get determined for those keywords. They get determined because you set a maximum of what you want to spend. It's called a keyword bid. You're telling the system, I'm willing to pay up to X amount for a click on this specific keyword. Now, more often than not, you're not going to pay that exact amount, but you're willing to pay up to that amount. So, And that's where the daily budget comes into place. So let's say you have $50 a day you want to spend on clicks throughout the day. And you don't want to have a cost per click of say like $10 because if you're averaging a $10 cost per click, you get five clicks, you're done for the day. Mm. That could be, you know, you know, Google runs ads 24 seven if you'd like. So, if, you know, if you get those clicks at that higher cost per click, you're done for the day and your competitors are still going to be showing throughout the day. That's sure. a big thing to think about. So, it's my job as a professional to make sure I'm balancing out your expectations of what you want to, to get versus how I want to make sure your budget lasts throughout the day. And remember, the biggest misconception or one of them is that your ad rank of where you show after results is not solely based on how much you bid. It's about your bid and how relevant everything is in terms of your keywords, your ad copy, and they take into account your landing page. So all three of those have to be relevant to each other. And then all of those have to be relevant to what the person is searching. So the more relevancy you have between those, and if you combine with a you know pretty aggressive bid, but not too aggressive, that's going to determine a higher ad rank. And the more success you have you know, with people clicking on your ad, the more Google will reward you by lowering your overall cost per click. Oh, wow. So that's a, a big incentive to – engage with someone like you that's used to right. it's writing a, these ads, et cetera. Correct. It's instead of not to just throw up a bunch of junk up there in terms of ad copy and just, you know, right. I want to bid on, you know, thousands of keywords and see what sticks. Now it's a great platform for testing, but you still need to make sure, you know, it's in line to what you want to advertise, not just what, you know, everybody else is doing. Too many people get caught up in what, well, what's my competitor doing? Well, don't worry about that first. Worry about what you want to promote about yourself. They might be promoting other products that you might not want to promote because it might not fit within your ROI, for example. Sure. So I always ask people, okay, 
what's important to you? Give me a sample keyword list of Inlet first of what you want to promote. You know, let me see the landing page so I can sort of get an idea of what sort of how to, you know, work on the ad copy. Right. And, you know, you go from there. And the ad copy is you want to write in two different ways, even though you're writing one piece of ad copy. You want to write it, obviously, relevant to your keywords to make sure you have a iteration of the keywords as much as possible in the ad copy. And then you still want to make sure it's relevant to a potential, you know, somebody searching, you know, is there a call to action? What's the incentive for somebody to click on the ad? Because that's the primary goal of this platform, of the Google ads platform, you know, is to get, you know, get you at the top of Google and then it's to get you website traffic. And then what happens from there is, you know, it's also important. But the main thing I always ask is, what do you want to get people to do once they're on their website? And that sort of helps me, you know, formulate a plan from there. So you touched on this a little bit, but I want to be clear um, uh, with folks in terms of what makes a an effective paid search. Effective paid search, again, it's relevancy. It's really about showing the potential consumer out there that you're – out there and you offering what they're looking for. And when you say relevancy, you mean that someone's come and typed in a search uh, phrase or, or uh, keywords sure. or whatever. Right. You want to have ad copy that's relevant to that search because that's what Google's interested in, Correct. in, in and for their clients. And that, right. And that's why Google will reward you if you are more relevant and you have a history of success. You have a history of something called a higher click-through rate which is your clicks divided by the number of ad impressions. So the higher your click-through rate is, the better chance you'll have of moving up on the page as well because Google wants to reward advertisers who get clicks because clicks makes Google a lot of money. They're not going to show your ads if you're not getting a lot of clicks. Right. That's why it's called pay-per-click advertising because you as a client pay for it and Google gets paid a lot. And that's why Google gives a search for free, right? Because Correct. It, that's why yeah, they don't yeah. charge. Trust me, Google is making a lot of money on the back end with this. I mean, we're sure. talking billions every quarter for the Google Ads platform. And remember, the Google Ads platform, I want to reiterate, is not just search ads. You know, when you're doing a search, they also handle display advertising. So all those banner ads you see across the Internet. Mm-hmm. They also handle uh, YouTube advertising. So when you're on YouTube, you see this, you know, a 10 second pre-roll ad. Right. Or if you're watching a very, you know, long, you know, video, you mm-hmm. see, you know, sort of a 30 second intermediate ad. Right. That's all YouTube. Which is owned by Google. Right. Which is owned by Google. Right. right. And that's on, and uh, for the video ads, that's on a cost per view basis. So mm-hmm. it's either you watch 30 seconds of the ad or the majority of the ad if it's a shorter, you know, ad length. Josh, what? Uh, industries, companies, uh, types of businesses are the best candidates for Google ad, um, campaign. I think any business that needs, you know, can get, you know, a lead or a sale immediately, meaning they go to your website, they can perform some type of action. It's not something where it's, you know, it's a long lead it's a long sales generation process. Now, some, Obviously, industry still will still use paid search for that. But in terms of, you know, think about somebody like, you know, a home service professional, like your plumber, an HVAC guy. You know, somebody's in a neighborhood, they have a busted pipe, they got a furnace broken, something like that. They need somebody, you know, today. They don't need somebody. This is not a month-long, you know, search and research process. So sure. If you've got somebody, let's say, here in Alpharetta, you know, you know, they can do a five-mile radius for their ads. You know, you know, they know where the subdivision are. They know where these homes are. So let's say if they want to, you know, do keywords like, you know, fix a water heater, you know, busted pipe, you know, toilet repair, things like that, that fall within their service category. Right. You know, they're going to, they're going to get impressions by people who need their service. Now, how they respond to that is up to them, whether, you know, they can, you know, you know, people call them or they'll send an online lead or, you know, sometimes they can even, you know, get a text back and forth, but. Service providers, you know, websites that sell things, e-commerce, obviously, because that's a direct, you know, to sale right there. Sure. If, you know, as long as, you know, they have the product that people want. So it's very important, you know, 
which is why I stress it's not just about the keywords. It's not just about putting a high bid on those keywords. It's about being relevant in all those phases. Keywords, ad copy, and a relevant landing page that has a clear call to action on there when people get there. Because the last thing you want to do is be paying for clicks and you have people you know, leaving a website because it's it's just not very good or it doesn't have a clear way to get in contact with said advertiser. Right. A lot of, it's very important. People always neglect one of those. And more often than not, it seems like, you know, we'll just send a lot of money through ad through the Google ads to, to a landing page. But, you know, I always look at, you know, show me, I always ask them, show me your website first. What are your goals? And then, you know, I'll be honest. Okay. I don't want to send money to a website that's not going to produce results. Right. It's like, and, and that should be the way with any other type of, you know, online advertising channel or a marketing channel, whether it's social media, Facebook, organic search, things like that. You want to make sure you're sending, you know, you know, paid leads essentially that are relevant because you know, they have a vested interest in what you offer them because that's how you get shown, you know, your ads get shown. Now, Josh, you're an independent consultant. Why, why, what, what are the virtues of using an independent consultant? The virtue of using somebody like myself is twofold. One, I'm the one handling all the work from start to finish. There's, you know, if you're not a fan of, you know, talking, you know, dealing with a lot of people for this one goal, then, you know, I'm the guy to handle it. Now, there are a lot of great agencies who do this as well, but not every business has the funds or the time to deal with agencies. You know, in smaller businesses, probably it's better to deal one-to-one, so I deal with them. And that's the, that's the biggest advantage where I come in. If you're not, you know, if you don't want to use a lot of people or you've been burned in the past, you know, to be honest, you know, sure. You, you know, if I've got 12 years experience in this field. It's not like I haven't been, you know, just picked this up the other day or anything like that. It's, you know, there's a big difference. And to make sure whoever you use for Google ads, it should be me. But if you don't make sure they're certified by Google and that's a yearly certification and, that should not be overlooked by anybody. So in other words, if folks call you, they're not calling your dorm room at, at college. No. Uh, they, you've, <laughs> you've been around a while. Correct. Um, uh, so uh, this has been great. So speaking of calling, for those that would like to be in touch with you, would like more information yeah. um, uh, on your services, tell them how they can be in touch. The quickest get- way to get a response is email. So it's Josh Bernstein Media at gmail.com. You can also call me at 770 315 Uh You can go to my website at jdbmedia.com. You'll see more about me, in turn, including certifications, uh, work history, previous clients, recommendations. So, And you can also send a uh, form to reach me from there as well. So. Awesome. Those are the easiest ways to get in touch. And qu- quite some impressive clients there. Thank so, you. Appreciate yeah. That, so yeah. congratulations on your success. And and uh, Josh Bernstein, thanks for being with us. Thank you. We appreciate it coming in. Absolutely. Uh, folks, just a reminder, you can listen to this show every Tuesday live at 1130. If, and we also have special shows throughout the week. So, uh, But in any case, if you miss any of our live shows, You can find us on all the major podcast platforms. That would include Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify. Uh, We're also on YouTube as well. Uh, Pretty much your favorite podcast app. I have yet to have anybody stump me with a podcast app they couldn't find North Fulton Business Radio on. So just check out your favorite podcast app. Search for North Fulton Business Radio. Subscribe to us there. Uh, and you'll get, uh, our, uh, stream of shows that we produce and release every week. We're also on, uh, North Fulton business radio.com online, uh, on the business radio X website. And, uh, we've got an archive of now 185 or so shows, 420, 430 guests, something like that, that we've had over the past almost four years as we've done this show. Nobody covers business in North Fulton like we do, So, and we're proud of that. So we are the voice of business in North Fulton. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Check us out there, North Fulton BRX. So for our guest, Dean Robinson, Robert, 
Dean Robertson and Josh Bernstein, easy for me to say, John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio. Renaissance Rewards Extra is the checking account that checks all the boxes. Roadside assistance? Check. Cell phone insurance? Check. More than 400,000 local shopping discounts? Check. Up to $25 per month in ATM refunds and a great rate? Check. All in an easy-to-use mobile app. To open an account or find out more about Renaissance Rewards Extra Checking, go to renaissancebank.com or visit us at any of our more than 190 locations throughout the South. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal Housing Lender.